it. If you see a possible one for Alpha, then. They have now opened for us. We are inside. From the very beginning, this was going to be a case that captured the public imagination. Uh, we're talking about a, a beautiful young woman, very brutally murdered. She literally sang in the church choir, and she was cut down in the prime of her life. Nothing had been stolen except for a remote control that was presumably used to get out of the complex. Maybe the knife that was used was, ta was taken from the kitchen. There were no signs of forced entry. And it was the sheer amount of violence, the kind of violence that, that police associate with a crime of where something personal is at stake. You can say only one thing about the frenzied attack on Inga, and that was that it was somebody who was acting in a frenzy of blows. I mean, there, there were many blows rained down on and many stab wounds. And the ferocity of the attack indicates some emotional component. Either that or a drug-induced component. There's no evidence that she moved anywhere after the first blow. Um, and they were substantial blows with a, with a reasonably heavy object, which fractured her skull and drove pieces of the fractured skull into the brain. Right at the start, the police believed that this was a crime committed by somebody close to Inga. In this case, it was Frey van der Feyfer, who was Inga's boyfriend at the time. It's a murder that shocked the university town of Stellenbosch. A 22-year-old student was stabbed and beaten to death three months ago. Now, a suspect has been arrested. Fred had an alibi, and his entire defense was based on an alibi, that he'd been at the Old Mutual for the entire day and couldn't possibly have been there. Inga had rented a DVD on the afternoon of the murder. There was a recording of Inga having taken out that DVD just after three o'clock on the day of her death. Fred's fingerprints were found on the cover of that DVD. He's placed at the crime scene at a time when he says he wasn't there. The second piece of evidence was the so-called bloody mark on the floor of the bathroom. the blood had come off Fred's shoe. When she was conducting the autopsy, the pathologist looked at all the various injuries that Inga had sustained and told the police that she thought they should look for a hammer. When they searched Fred's car, they found an ornamental hammer that had been given to him by Inga's parents a few months before for Christmas. The hammer, which had a bottle opener on one side for opening bottles, and a small hammer on the other side. The marks on Inga's head, uh, the wounds, fitted the hammer. The final straw was that when the police searched Fred's briefcase, they found a letter that Inga had written to him on the morning she was murdered. And it was clear that Fred and Inga had had some sort of disagreement immediately uh, prior to her death, within the last 24 hours. Ek is jammer dat jy van oogend so deur mekaar hier weg is. Ek was aanvankelijk onredelijk en toe het die hele story net uit beheer uitgeraak. The scenario seemed, seemed depressingly familiar for the police. This had been a couple in love that had a fight about something and Fred in a fit of rage had murdered her. 